Hi, um, going from the kitchen. Uh, I haven't been awake for an awfully long time. I'm a little baggy eyed. Got some coffee. Um, Jacob is having a. Um, uh, he gets to talk to his doctor virtually, whereas mine was just cancelled, um, which is good for him, but uh, for a variety of good reasons. Uh, it's time for me to spend time out here, and I've been watching YouTube videos um, on headphones. Um, I have these neat Bluetooth headphones, which are fairly new. Uh, I actually got them specifically to do a phone interview with uh, one of the stars of uh, the color of uh, the color out of space, not Nicolas Cage, unfortunately. Um, but I've been using them a lot to walk and play um, what I mostly play is Pandora's Tom Waits channel because I find Tom Waits um, and the songs associated with them cheerful. In one of the other rooms is a nine-year-old child, the child of one of my roommates, who is cackling at, I think he's also watching YouTube videos, um, he's loud. Um, one of my roommates is an EMT. I haven't seen him in days. Hi, Sasha. Are you working from home? Um, one of my roommates is Sasha, who just signed on. Um, and, uh, mostly I just logged on, uh, to kill a bit of time while I'm waiting for Jacob to get off his phone call. Um, if you hear strange noises in the background, it's probably the child making noises at his, uh, children's YouTube is weird. It's very strange. I don't think I like it, but, yeah. <laughs> but the child is very strange, too. <laughs> um, so, uh, what's new today? Not a damn thing. Same as yesterday. Um, my plans for the day include uh, taking a whack at another movie review. I did finish my movie review, for those of you watching. Well, um, hey Sasha, come visit when, when you get home. I haven't seen you to talk to in a while. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to uh, probably start another movie review. This one doesn't look like it's going to be very good either. Um, but that's judging based on a title and my inability to find it on Google. So, slept all day yesterday. I slept a lot of yesterday, too. It was... It was a day. Hi, Matt. How's California treating you? I see some of your posts. I don't really reply to them, but I see them. Hang in there. Be with your family. Um, let's see, what else do I plan? I'm going to take another long walk. Uh, yesterday I walked from, uh, 4.30 East to 9th East and back along 33rd. Um, and, uh, I stopped at the 7-Eleven at 9th and 33rd, which is scary because I walked in and there were people doing gambling machines in the corner. And that seemed very strange. And there was this really old man at the counter. And I was thinking, man, you shouldn't be out in public. I mean, he was like... Doddering, you know? Um, and so I grabbed a... Um, hey, Rachel. I grabbed a uh, Ben & Jerry's Pint Slice, which is something fairly new. Yeah, I actually saw your response to my last one, which made me think I, was, I would sign on now. Um, and then I went to the counter, and he rung it up wrong, and, and just was taking forever, and he's like this. And he touched my stuff, and he touched my money, and he touched my hand when he gave my change back. And I'm like, Ugh. Uh, And so, like, I tried to eat it without the outside wrapper touching me. Um, and um, those of you following along may wonder, why does someone without a sense of taste eat ice cream? Well, this was... Um, a crunchy chocolate coat on a cookie dough ice cream and um, some good textures in that. 
Did you know that the cookie dough in Ben and Jerry's cookie dough ice cream is ever so slightly salty? I never noticed. So it's uh, it's not over sweet. Um, so there's a sweet and salty and creamy, and then like three kinds of crunch: the 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 chocolate shell, uh, the chocolate chips, and the the dough itself is uh, kind of crunch. It's not smooth. It's like a crunch. Um, and varieties of texture are, are now interesting to me the way flavor was. Um, there's a limit to how far that'll go, but uh, I'm trying to expand my palate of enjoyment. So I walked home um, eating that and being a little, uh, yeah. You know, I, I, was, I was actually thinking, um, I don't like when people touch my hand when they're they're giving change back but they always do and i was thinking maybe maybe people will stop doing that now but uh, apparently not <laughs> uh so my plans for the day are to get on another movie review and to take another walk um probably visit with the rats again um i'm thinking once jake has gone to work i might look up a youtube video on yodeling. I have the basic technique. I, I, I figured it out. Um, but I, I need some, um, like, like yodeling is exactly one thing. It's switching from lower to higher register, bang, 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 across that, that gap without sliding between the two notes. That's how a yodel happens. But that's not yodeling yet. That's just the technique. Um, Hi, Nicole. Uh, so I've got the um, the core technique of yodeling, but that doesn't mean that I yodel. Um, so I'm going to uh, set as a challenge um, perfecting my yodel. Uh, but only yeah, Jake's going to work, uh, because you can't yodel quietly. Um, yeah, walking is, walking is important to me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and, and, and part of it is, is kind of improv too. Um, you know, some people have a hard time improv uh, gibberish. Um, and, and yodeling is essentially a sort of gib gibberish and it's, uh, gosh, I'm going to step a little away from the mic and see if I can, uh, demonstrate the little, cause, uh, I haven't warmed up, so I might not even be able to do this, but I, I started figuring out the yodel at Fear Factory um, because I was doing a, a, a scream at, when, when I walked into the torture chamber I would often scream to sort of add to the noise of the room because so I was a um, manager and I was just kind of passing through each of the zones and, and I try to add to the zone while I'm there um, and I can't always add a direct scare so I'll add to the noise of the room so the the room seems dangerous, and and as I'm walking down this this hall, I go ah, you know, or um, lederhosen. I used to have some lederhosen. A yodeling magic show. What an idea. Um, gosh, I don't know if I can do a full scream indoors with other people around. I'm afraid the cops will get called. Um, but uh, let's see if if I can do it. So uh, it's basically ah uh, he and kind of. Cutting between the the regular and the falsetto or, or head voice without without either sliding between them or, or without a significant gap. Ah, there it is. And then you add the realization. So it's rough. But I have the technique now, so um, one day you'll see me do a yodel number. Um, if you want something in the same family as yodeling, um, look up Efing, E-E-F, Efing. Um, it's a very strange thing, and it's essentially a percussive inhale. It's an, like an old hillbilly thing, and I don't know how they do it without hyperventilating. Um, so there, um, I'm going to do that. Um, I have some magic books and some cards. Um, that a, a good friend gave me for my birthday, and it might be a good time for me to start um, practicing my magic that doesn't include fire.
because right now all my magic tricks that I know how to do um, are fire based and that really limits the venues I can use them in. Also, I'm not very good at them and um, probably I should have a spotter while I practice in case I... Uh... Oh, hey, Tibetan chanting. Um, that reminds me, another sound I learned uh, at Fear Factory that's based on a growl, and again, I don't know if I can do this because I haven't warmed up, um, is is this sort of, th it sounds like a bit throat singing, it's like a resonant growl. Um, let's see if I can do this. Uh, it take a minute, free me. So the basic growl, and then kind of open, open throats in the chambers. Like you're doing a resonant voice. If you've ever had voice lessons, you may have some idea what that means, or uh, if you've taken uh, some of the voice lessons, me. So, I don't know what to do with that sound. Um, uh, okay, thank you, Sasha. Um, I think I still have fuel and materials. Um, I believe there's a good chance that the um, the tricks I've purchased are cheap and crappy, and that may be partly why I'm having trouble with the fire tricks. Uh, overtone singing. Uh, that's that's as close as I get. Um, full overtone singing is, uh, um, as I understand it, kind of a lifelong. Uh, thing and you're actually literally changing the the structure of your your vocal folds um, due to basically wrecking them like like doing what a vocal coach would tell you is wrong um, but it carries really really well and so uh, in the same way I like to do that that sort of yodeling scream in uh, the torture chamber in the catacombs I'll often do that that other growl um, because it carries really well and kind of resonates through. The catacombs aren't as echoey as I would like because our rocks are all made of foam. Um, but if it were, it would echo really, really well all the way down the river. The, um, um, so uh, part of part of working Fear Factory has been playing with my voice. I believe. You know, this might just be aging, but my voice has dropped a bit since working there, because I spend six weeks a month growing, and even if I have a talking uh, character, he tends to have a growl, right? You know, and uh, uh, that's that's a, just a thing I tend to fall to if I'm not sure what's going on. And sometimes, sometimes I will even do a pitch growl! <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm part Muppet on Mother's side. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, sounds. Um... How would you like to learn, uh, you know what? what, how much time do I have before his call is over? I can't see the time from here. Um, I think maybe I will record my, my zombie lecture. Um, yeah, it's probably aging. Um, I, I have a, a sort of a standardized lecture for haunt acting called Zombie 101. Um, it works from the premise that if you can learn to do a, a good zombie, that the, the various skill sets combined to make a good zombie will uh, benefit you with no matter what character you're doing. Um, and, and honestly, if, if I were teaching um, regular theater... Um, yay! Thank you, Lydia. Um, if I were teaching other sorts of classes, I might still do Zombie 101. Um, in the same way, uh, those of you that were at the, uh, the hot toddy, uh, improv workout that I, uh, I taught, um, it was about movement and posture and gait as a means of character development. Um, that came out of Zombie 101. I, I sort of took the monster layer off the top and, and then did the rest. Um, so, uh, cause it's a topic I can talk on, let's talk about zombies. Um, so the term comes from Haitian voodoo, Vodun or, or various pronunciations and spellings, um, and doesn't refer to anything like what zombies are today. 
the original uh, zombie was raised by a Bokun, um, a, uh, a spiritual practitioner of sorts, um, and became the, the mindless slave of the Bokun. Um, but uh, sort of in theory, the way this worked was the Bokun would poison someone with um, a toxin that rendered them appearing dead and, and kind of did a bit of a mind wipe on them. So they would be buried in the funeral and then they dig them up and, and, uh, uh, yeah, Joyce. Uh, and then, uh, sort of through a bit of a manipulation, they, they get these actually slaves out of them. Um, and it's very spooky and very impressive to the locals. Um, but that zombie is nothing like what, what we think of now as a zombie. Um, I think uh, probably the first real incursion of the zombie mythos into the West is a movie called White Zombie, just as racist as it sounds. So um, some travelers crash in Haiti or somewhere like Haiti, um, and there's a, a Bokun played by... Um, uh, shoot, the, the kind of big scary house. Um, oh, I can't even blank on his name. Um, and he was raising the local zombies and they were his servants and uh, the people crashed there. He kept them as guests while, while they were like, help was coming or something like that. And, um, he took control over one of them. And so like the idea of the title is that the, the local brown zombies aren't a big deal, but oh my God, there's now a white zombie. He's now he's now zombified a, a white girl. <gasps> oh no! But uh, this is possibly the first time the concept of zombie hit uh, popular culture. Um, and again, this is more like the the traditional voodoo zombie, the um, uh, the the bokor. And I I don't think they use the word in the movie. Uh, and oh, I almost got his name. Um, yeah. So there is that. Um, and then the next big jump in, in zombie and public, uh, public view in, in popular culture was, of course, Night of the Living Dead, which never referred to the living dead as zombies. They were not zombies. They weren't thought of as zombies. At the time, you know, the, the sort of sleepwalker zombie was, was what people thought of as the zombie, right? You see, like, older cartoon zombies. They always got the sleepwalker stance. That's from White Zombie. That's from that movie. Um... But the uh, the Living Dead from Night of the Living Dead were were uh, risen dead with no explanation. Like uh, later later zombie movies generally have some sort of explanation, whether it's uh, a virus from outer space, or it's um, you know toxic waste, or it's um, something spiritual. Uh, but Night of the Living Dead just had no explanation. Just suddenly the dead didn't stay dead. They got up and they attacked. Um, so that became the source of the zombie horde, right? A again, they weren't called zombies yet. Um, but the, the idea of these slow moving witless creatures that only had, had hunger, um, but if they attack in numbers, they, if they horde, um, they become insurmountable. Um, and the fact that they're essentially unstoppable through other means, because you know, if you want someone to stop attacking you, most of our methods of stopping them involve hurting them, right? I mean, there's the direct kill, but, you know, I mean, zombies are to kill. But it, there's the direct kill, but a lot of what we, we would do, like if you punch someone, it's all about hurting them enough to stop. But you can't hurt a zombie because they don't feel pain, except for that one zombie. Um, we may get to that one. Um, he eats brains. So, um... Which one was that? The zombie who ate brains to stop the pain of being dead. There's a lot of pathos in zombie film. That was, uh, was it Return of the Living Dead or? I don't remember. I think I'll get mixed up in my head. But that, that got the horde zombie into the public view. Um, a little later we got the, the cliche of brains, um, but really that was just one movie that had zombies eating brains. They're, uh, they're all just sort of going after human beings. Um, 
then later we started getting zombies that retained a little bit of their their uh, life memory, kind of stumbling through going to the mall because that's what they did in life and that sort of thing. Um, the the Shaun of the Dead zombie was very very much a play on that. Um, then we started getting fast zombies and things that aren't really zombies, like like rage infection and that sort of thing. Um, but they all kind of fall into the zombie um, category because they're humans or things that were once humans that are uh, mindless and uh, aggressive. Um, and they, they may or may not be dead, they may or may not be risen dead, um, but that's, that's kind of the evolution of the zombie in popular culture. So if you're acting as a zombie, it's vitally important, I feel, um, to be real, to, to be um, complete as a zombie. Um, and that means deciding which level of zombie you are. Like, if, are, you, are you white zombie, sleepwalker zombie? Are you Night of the Living Dead, mindless, empty shambler? Uh, are you uh, Shaun of the Dead, kind of um, vaguely remembering life and being c kind of confused as your main uh, expression when you're not actively hunting? Uh, hi. I'm giving a lecture on zombies. Cool. So, uh, <laughs> um, so you have to decide what kind of zombie you are, the, the rage infection or, or something like that. Um, and then... Uh, based on what kind of zombie that or something new if you want to create something new you can um, there's a lot of terrain has already been covered but maybe you can create something new um, and then you have to think about two things what were you before you were a zombie how did you become a zombie let's say three things how did you become a zombie and once you are a zombie what's um, yeah that was did, did he actually appear on camera or did you just hear him um, uh, what were you before you became a zombie? How you became a zombie? What's your motivation now? What's moving you? Like literally motivation. What's moving you? Um, so uh, in some models of zombie, you've got um, some sort of inhuman undead spirit motivating um, the piece of flesh that was a human body. Like there's no no remnant. It's not me walking it's something walking my brain my my body right um the the fungal zombies of the last of us great twist on zombie the last of us um and so what i like to say is it's like um there's something driving the car that is your body but it's really shitty at it it's really terrible at driving the body it doesn't know how to um be smooth or easygoing. It doesn't much care. It doesn't care if there's discomfort or pain in the way it motivates. All it needs to do is to be able to move forward and seek sustenance, whether it's actively eating the, the target or just attacking the target through, um, you know, rage motivation. Um, and so your movement is going to be like, uh, like there's a bad puppeteer moving you, right? You've got like 200 joints in the human body, um, and many of them have infinite range of articulation, um, and multiple, like particularly your, your ball joints and things like your head, you know, you can do forward, backward, left, right, turn, right, left, um, yeah, slide, right, left, forward, back, uh, and you can do these in combination, um, and if you take each major joint and kind of position it in a way that doesn't make sense with the other ones without actually hurting yourself, it has to look uncomfortable, but it doesn't have to actually hurt you. Although the more you do it, the more you get good stretching and stuff, the more you can do without, without hurting yourself. Um, so like people tend to just go kind of asymmetrical one shoulder up and drag one foot. Uh, that's bare, bare, bare minimum. And that's, that's really kind of a, um, uh, like a, it's, a, it's pretty much a, a cliche. It's a, it's a marker to tell people this is a zombie rather than actually showing zombie uh, of whatever kind. So uh, you've got your, your, your body, your, your, your posture, your movement, your gait, your, your way of walking, your way of motivating. 
um, and you you uh, I, I start people with with the 200 joints with like just kind of focus on your joints uh, and then we do uh, a variant called the the string um, this is just a way of visualizing that uh, you can add on to the 200 joints and that idea is that there's an invisible string attached to part of your body and if you've ever done any mime this is this is pretty um, pretty basic stuff so you're being mo motivated forward by string or multiple strings if you want to get advanced um, and that affects your gait that affects your way of movement uh, with that posture um, and that uh, creates the zombie look right so uh, going backwards a little who are you beforehand uh, it depends on the kind of zombie you are um, how much it's gonna matter but let's say you were um, a heavy set butcher um, with a limp because you were in the war um, and then you are bitten by a zombie on the side which is going to leave your arm hanging a bit because it's a really terrible wound um, you know so that, that's going to affect uh, your 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 body has to move like if you're a big guy you have to move a certain way to keep you from falling over right you you you, you can't Triple lung is the same way that a, a smaller body could. So you've got these uh, various factors that go into how you're going to move your body and how you're going to hold your body. Um, the the wound that, that caused the infection might be severe enough to affect how you walk. Um, that might cause a limb to drag or 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 you know uh, twist way out. Then the the, the kind of zombification, if it's uh, an infectious bite or if it's um, let's say a demon raising the body from the dead again technically not a zombie but kind of in the field of the animated dead um, it's going to affect it so maybe your motivating force likes the idea of hurting you maybe the motivating force is stupid maybe the motivating force is super efficient at one thing and doesn't care about anything else that feeding um, if your creature is motivated primarily by hunger, it will tend to lead pardon, mouth forward. Um, or, or you might, uh, if, if it's more about like attacking and hurting, it might, might have your, your hands more forward. Carefully do the, the, the sleepwalker zombie because that's way played out. Um, so your motivation uh, means both what, what's physically moving you, what you know your your theory at least of what's causing the zombie to keep moving, and what um, what the the animated body wants, whether any of your mind is still in there or not. Um, and as um, a haunt actor, your motivation has to be something that will scare people. So generally, it's going to be to attack, whether it's to eat them or to scare them or to to hurt them or kill them, or to chase them. Maybe you just go toward movement. And are drawn to movement um, you know you've got to have this sort of thing in your mind what motivates me so that when the the guest goes by uh, you have a reason to attack and in haunt acting you need the reason to do the scare you know I'll call it an attack even if it's not technically an attack you have, a, have to have a reason to attack and the complicated thing about haunt acting is, is you've got to have a reason to fail or reject the attack right because if you just go rawr and then wander off you're very clearly an actor who attacked and then dropped the attack and wandered off to do the next one to keep immersion to keep the suspension of disbelief you've got to have even just a slight and tenuous um, grasp on um, what the what the retreat motivation is uh, you know and I've done things like they they smell wrong so like I'll get close I'll smell them and go, oh, um, when we do the 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 parade the zombie walk um, that's that's often good because it gets a laugh um, I play it for laughs when when you're acting for an event you want to do kind of a, um, a, a a humorous or fun version of the character if you're in a dark room uh, you know and they've paid for their ticket price then then you you go full on but if you're at, at a parade, um, you, you kind of 
tone the, the the horror element element back and it's okay to be funny um, and so the 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 victim smells off so I, I uh, um, or sometimes you can be scared of the victim when you get a good look at him um, I've done that um, as a vampire with the, the implication that they're somehow protected or maybe you know they've got a cross on them or something um, or uh, a motivation if, if you've got a bit more brain power can be that your job is to corral them toward a big bad you know you're you're the the mook and your your job is to corral them toward the boss so you're just scaring them um you know so you've got to have the the levels of, of motivation for any haunt character um if you're a clown then your motivation can be this is funny um and and that that can work for both you know it's funny to scare them that's it you've had your scare done uh, so uh, that's the basic zombie 101 um, without walking around and, and having people do the exercises. Um, and I think if you've done any sort of acting that has any level of physicality, um, you can perhaps get, get a sense of how um, some of this thought process can go toward creating uh, an insta character. So like an improv. Hello. Um, you have a second to step from the back line into the scene and most of the time we just sort of step up as this sort of vague nebulous being until until the scene develops enough so we know who we are it's more powerful to step off the back line as a character and you can do that by saying hello i'm a traveling salesman but that's telling not showing and if you can it's generally better to show don't tell so you can walk in with with your 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 body posture and your gait giving information about the character um, you can use your voice to give information about the character not just the words that the character speaks um, so uh, uh, this is uh, oddly enough haunting and improv go well together um, because in, in haunting also you've got to um, define and and communicate your character or your monster your motivation all of that in a few seconds you know it, you're lucky if you get as much as 30 seconds per guest um, you, you know probably five or six um, and you've got a whole story to, de to deliver in five or six seconds you know can't be complicated you're not going to get much backstory you're not going to be able to do it with dialogue a picture is worth a thousand words you can give them a lot of story in the way you approach in your posture in your gait um, not to mention things you may not have control over like your makeup design your costume design and the set design uh, Jake Rachel says hi hi Rachel how you doing I guess you can't really answer that yeah well with like a thumbs up that yeah there's a bit of a, a lag too so um, it may be a minute before Rachel notices that your voice just appeared again oh uh, nope, yeah. Um, so, yeah, improv, uh, haunting, and in fact, any kind of acting, if you step on stage and then put on the character, um, that's less powerful than if your very first step on stage is demonstrating your character fully, right? Um, that doesn't mean there aren't surprises in your character and there isn't development in your character, but you are... Um, not Joe Schmo the actor, like right from the first second. Um, and use your costume design and your makeup design and the set design of where you are to inform the character um, and the other people in the scene with you. Um, yay, surviving. Um, so I mean that's that's the that's the basic lesson from Zombie 101 into the the insta character concept, um, and I recommend practicing this. Um, if you do improv um, and you do a, a scene uh, or a game where you step in, uh, step in as a character. Have something. You don't even need to have the uh, the details of the character in mind. You don't need to know. Um, consciously that this is an old man from Italy 
uh, with a bad back, uh, you know, step in, uh, kind of mentally assemble your body and your gait um, and, and your voice and start the scene. And you're going to notice that what you assembled creates a character automatically. You just sort of pay attention to what develops. You discover. And, and if you do much improv, you know that the magic is in discovering uh, what's going on, discovering a character, discovering a, a, a gift, discovering a theme, a game. Right. And even little games like, uh, you know, Alphabet or, or something like that, you can totally do it in a character, and it's good practice. Um, you may never do uh, questions for an audience. You do it as, a, as an exercise or as a warm-up. Uh, but if you do it as a character, um, it's more interesting. It might be worth watching for an audience. It's good practice. And believe it or not, doing it as a character is easier because it kind of gets you out of your head somewhat. If you want the end result to be a natural seeming conversation, it's going to be quirky because of the game mechanics. Um, but doing it as a character in a situation is is actually going to be easier than doing it as yourself playing the game. Because um, that's, that's a whole different uh, internal process. Um, so, there. Um, it looks like there are only three of you left that have stuck with me so far. Um, any any questions or comments? Uh, or if anyone wants to comment um, after I, I finish and save this, uh, the the Zombie 101 Insta Character Lecture is, uh, is now complete. If we were in person, I would have us do some exercises. But... Most of them really require some interaction and some movement and, and being able to see a further than that. Um, so yeah, I might do another one later today. This was a bit impromptu because uh, I wanted to kill a half an hour. Um, and I've probably done more than that already. Uh, but thanks for coming out. This has been my TED Talk. <laughs>